have a Dyson DC40. Why do they never roll anymore? Back in the day when they locked, you could roll the thing up, gingerly rolling around your Dyson DC40. But you would noticed that it's starting to sound like utter garbage. <laughs> Now, a vast part of the noise that this machine is exhibiting is actually from its post-motor filter. A fairly common issue, and that one is, you change that if you could, there's only a ten of a set. No, it's this noise. <coughs> Alert the doctor, we've got an air raid siren, but crikey, what do you do? Well, you spend about £15 on it known working, or in my case actually, you break it from the scrapper. Remember that DC-40 that we were struggling to get the brush roll working? Gone. This is its really good heart, and we're going to put it into there. Come in. Oh, I suppose we've got to take it apart, haven't we, and do it properly. So, let me show you how to swap a motor into a Dyson DC-40. Yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? The motor that you need for a DC40 Mark 1. You've got to get the difference between the two. Mark 2 has a slider and an 800 watt motor. This doesn't and has one of these, a very nice Panasonic 1250. You don't see how a lot of these burn out, actually. They're normally just bearings like this. It's the DC41 that burns out as we know from previous videos. So, uh, uh, really? So, it's been off, wand off, hose out, although I am struggling with that part because it's just disgusting in here actually. Ew. What the? Uh, there we crikey. There we go, so it was a bit of a gamble, so not rip the end of the hose out, but we got there in the end. You off, you off, red clip out, brush roll off. Make sure that you are not plugged in, that would be a little bit silly. Then, recline the machine, and we need to take off this part here, which we can do with the aid of some pliers, some needle nose pliers work, it's only a half turn bit there, then you can use the same whatever you used to just unspin this plastic nut, because that's all it really is, and then you can get it with your fingers, he says, struggling to get it with his fingers, there we go, Like so, it goes on forever. Right, this is going to get a little bit complicated and I think we're going to be swapping bits quite a lot as well. First thing you need to do is remove the underneath screws that hold the top slider on. One underneath there, one underneath there. Those screws to one side, then you can put the head down and off. Oh, you've got to be careful to not make anything, slide off the top slider, like so. Then, drink another can of special brew. No, you don't. We undo the filter cage with its four screws that sit around only one side. Four, like so. These two washers come off of the side where we had to undo it, the plastic nut. FYI, bits are going to go sort of everywhere. Stand it back up. Oh, oh, that is part of the loom. Always fun when it does that. Stand it up and uncover these three side screws here. On the opposite side, undo these two ones under here. These are all 215 so far. Fairly standard. This is one of the last Dysons that have 
just normal nice T15 screws. Oh, then under your back hose, ew, that's disgusting. Oh, yeah, that's where that came from. Look, we'll have to sort that out later when it all goes back together because now we can jostle off the entire yoke assembly, peel your wires gingerly back so the loom comes out and you look at that there, isn't that disgusting? Whatever. It is a job. Right, yes, this is our brush roll loom. We can push the rubber foam seal through here carefully and remove it and can't go much further yet until we remove the suction ducts. And there are many different screws holding this on. There are two fairly short silver ones at the front. Then a black one up here. And there's another black one hiding somewhere under there. No, don't you dare wedge yourself and then hide forever. And then finally there is one on the top at the back. We can then release the clips holding it on this side and take off the PCB cover. Now, I would recommend, and I do always, take a photograph of how it all goes because, you know, I've done a lot of these and I still do it. So you take yourself a nice photograph so that you can put it back together afterwards, take as many as you need, or watch an idiot on the internet do it. And then you can just press rewind. I don't have an idiot, so I have to do it myself. Unplug the entire flipping lock. Each spade connector has a nice little locking tang, just for added fun. And some of them you have to lift the rubber boot to get to. You have to remove the rubber boot anyway on a couple of them. Oh, that one you can get to. Which size the red one on this side you can get to that okay then unplug the that's the brush roll switch and this is for our brush roll power then you go scurrying around for I think this is going to be a T8 for the little tiny screw that holds the PCB on which you can do with your fingers and then you can take out the PCB and its small little screw. Eh, eh. Now we don't actually need to touch much else on here, bar take off, which involves putting them back on. These are hateful, hateful things. They either flow on absolutely fine and just crimp down, or they're little sods. They get caught up on everything. You take it off, because otherwise the loom doesn't pass through. And then you can push its rubber bung down into the abyss of the motor, ready for the next part, which involves taking off this screw here on this side, then flipping it back over and removing all of the screws, holding on the side suction valve, like so. And it should, ah, uh, should just come off really. Might have to release a few wires. What's holding it on? Oh, this is holding it on. So we do need to remove the brush roll loom. Oh, that's a slight pain in the bum. We've got to push all these rubber bungs back in, otherwise, you get fantastic air leaks because Dyson decided to put all the electronics right in the way. And then you then got to feed the motor loom out and that's sort of it you can leave that dangling there it won't move anymore because it is stuffed in by the big wire there now oh probably going to take out the brush roll recline switch then you need your t8 again to undo the wheel spring pop and then if you flip it over you do just pop off Fairly easy. All right, scary sod to get back on though. We've got all that to contend with in a minute, but that's for future us and not us now. Undo the two screws holding the motor on, and then undo the really fiddly, very fragile plastic clips that hold 
the motor housing onto the machine. Oh, our little switch for the brush roll switch fell out. Now, this is where it gets really fun. You have to turn the motor ever so slightly and remove a carbon brush. Yes, you heard me correctly. You undo this screw and you pull the brush out and then it will move itself around enough for you to take it out. There is then a wire pushed underneath a piece of plastic. You can either unhook it properly like I'm trying to do or just snap the piece of plastic off because it doesn't really achieve much in the grand scheme of things. And there we go! Here is our dodgy bearing win. Oh yeah. You can hear it. Motor. And here is our good motor. You can see I wrote on the fan case because wouldn't that be hilarious if we put the bad motor back in. Ha 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 ha. Right. Out with this one's carbon brush. I'd already left it loose from doing it the first time. Oh, we'll put that carbon with that motor. I never know how to keep carbon. Do you see that one? Look, it's already started going a bit grotty. Off it is. It's already started going a bit grotty, so it's not worth keeping it. I, I just never get it. Why people think you can change the carbons on a Dyson. I'm afraid you can't. Unless you're incredibly lucky and like actually do this a couple of times in its life to work out if it's any good or not. You know what I'd rather do? I'd have to spend the 15 quid on eBay. <laughs> Whenever you need to do this, which won't be very often. Let's be honest, oh my goodness, right, you now have to get the carbon brush back in and you have to have the brush pushed down, bang on level, otherwise it flicks around the armature and won't go in. Whilst wrestling the wires, whilst keeping the motor at a position that it doesn't want to go into. And then dump the screw. There's probably a more official way of doing that, but that's the way that I have consistently found works. Next, pop your motor casing back on. It will only really go on one way. And of course, if you were especially clever, you'd have noted which way it went before you took it off. Clip it down and then put its two screws back in. Next, we need to take our brush roll switch assembly fit it and its little spring off to here and then as long as it does that you is doing okay and then and this is the really funny part ha uh, you have to make sure it doesn't fall off as you actually no don't do that oh my goodness wheels wheels watson Oof. it might fall off we might have to redo it I won't lie, because we're going to flip it around and oh, don't you fall out. Oh dear. Eh. Get on. Oof. Oh, it did move. Uh oh. Uh oh. Because of course now it's going to get knocked by the very thing that it is obviously supposed to do. Oh, bother. Then, oh, feed the wires through, everything's falling apart at this point. Do not panic, it'll all come together in the end, folks. Mind you, don't trap your looms that are wallowing around. Crikey, Dyson didn't make this easy, did they? Of course, they just swapped the entire machine around and sent a heck of a lot of plastic and waste to landfill. We can avoid doing that. Right, our rubber bush is now in. Nothing seems to have fallen off yet, so I think we're going to go for a test fit of this duct, which has to fit very squarely and properly down, otherwise it leaks air in a hilarious way when you've got it all back together and finally realise. Put all the screws back in. That's actually the wrong screw in the wrong place there. Let's put this one in to hold it. 
this top one in to hold it. Oh, you see, we have a trap loom. That's why you have to be very, very careful, folks. We seem to attract the brush roll switch. There we go, look. Oh, and we didn't lose anything while we were there. That's excellent. Right, put all the screws back in. Then, with the suction duct on nice and square, we can fit a little spring for the wheels back into place. This is what helps the wheels flick up when you so much as breathe on the machine. There we go. So, we can now let go of it and peel back the brush roll loom because we don't need that. Oh, crikey, we need to push this loom back in with its rubber bung which is very difficult. You just gotta sort of poke it in from the side and eventually it'll pop into place. Like so. Then, get all those wires out of the way and pop the PCB back into place. Then, with your picture next to you, and we have to refit the crimp cover to the white crimp, we can put everything back together. Then with the PCB all done and buttoned up, we can well, latch on the left hand side and then you've got to clip it over to the other side and then do up all of its screws. We have one here, one at the top and one in here at the side. Eh, yay, didn't drop it. Then, well, we better push that bit of the brush roll loom back into place and tuck its wires inside to where they need to go as well as the brush roll switch wires there we go look it all fits together nicely nicely every wire has its place right now comes the bit that i absolutely utterly detest on this entire fluffing job and that's this bottom carriage here because you have to get these two cogs into there quite happily whilst making sure that everything else sits right all the time the hose is fighting you. It is not a fun job. Um, yeah, it's probably the worst bit of this entire thing. Here comes the sped up footage and the footage of me swearing. I think that's it. And I had to do bonus spin the little white in a bush until all the screw holes line up, which you do sometimes have to do. And there's only really one way to test if this mechanism is in place, and that is to put these three screws in, and then sadly you have to flip it over and put the other half moon clamp on because it holds it square. And yeah, it will not work at all if it's not fitted because it will just bind and go off center this is ah uh, if anybody has a really good way of doing this you know straight away please do let me know it is one of the jobs that i struggle with on the dc40 dc41 by complete opposite is very easy indeed none of this trouble See, it's bound. Our cog is too far 
you can't even see the flipping cog. There, look, our cog is too far in. So we now have to play the game of taking it on and off. Oh, my torque setting is far too high. And adjusting that little white cog until it sits properly and the whole thing pivots. sodding cog is in and done and it was loose as well you will have a nice satisfying clunk down and this bit moves very freely and then oh, careful of our loom it should click up and that's actually better than a lot of dc40s are fantastic now time for the brush roll loom and this isn't a barrel of laughs either have to say because there's a lot of cable vomiting that you have to do. You have to put one back behind the housing and then push them into it so that the flat bit sits uh, on there. And I'll get it in and then I'll show you what I mean. You start from the top here, put your rubber bung in, put the loop of cable down, back up and then sit that plastic piece there. Then you run the wires down and then you flip them around and run them right down the back, right down to the bottom. And when they're all in their channels, it's very fiddly, the socket sits flush like so, or will sit flush like so. When we get this bit on, now you'll notice that this has a chip missing out of it. That means that this machine will have a lean. If you need to replace your recline latch bracket, centre thing you need to do it now then holding that down otherwise it will snap off you have to get this as low as you can and slide the slider into place ow caught my finger oh ow oh i think we just pop that out now yeah? oh bother 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 no we can't have done it should then slide over there, has to slide over there, so that bit sandwiches itself into there, and it literally is a massive jigsaw puzzle. Then you can find the two screws that hold it in, here they are, and put them in quickly before anything, <gasps> you see, got to hold it, got to hold it together people, and then do the screws up really quickly. Now is also a slightly good time to test it while we are only here. Not working! Probably shouldn't do that, I've just noticed that is doing that. Yes, we can now finish smashing it back together. You want to put your two washers back onto this side of here. Oh, make sure you put your hose on as well, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. Then you need this side of the ball and again twist it on by hand until you reach a certain level of resistance and then carry it on the rest of the way. And then grab your plastic cap, sit it inside and then give it a half tweak just to lock it into place. Flipping the machine over we need to get Oh, all the screws are falling out. Ah, oh, filter latch cover, like so. It'll only sit on convincingly one way, so don't worry too much if you've forgotten. Do other screws up, like so. This is it for the screws now, folks. Two, one. We've done all of the screws. Put the filter on. I mean, I'll be honest, if you're replacing a burnt out motor, please spend the extra £10 on a brand new set of filters. Obviously, this motor didn't burn out, and um, I've not been asked to change the filters, so we're not going to. Then, we can stand it up, and then do the slight acid test, which is put the floor head on, 
This is where we work out if it's all got to come apart again. Or if we'll get away with it and it's good enough. Oh. Push the clip on and yeah. See it? Yeah. If that you know binds up, you know, holds itself up like that, it should float completely freely. And then it should park with the slightest push on the back of the wheels. We need to put the bottom cord hook back on. Click our hose into place. And then check it's clipped in. That currently isn't. There we go. Just need a good old shove down. Put the wad back on. Put the bin back on, which I put right over here. Ooh. We'll give it a test and see if it sounds any less trashed. Now this next test is the big boy test, but obviously the brush roll needs to spin. We might be able to see it through the filth. The filter howl is still there, sadly, that is fine. But yeah, everything else is done. It's going to lean because obviously that bit is broken. You can see that that side, it does stop itself. This side, it just rides up and over. That's just cosmetic. That's fine. But you potentially just saved your nice and DC40 for the sake of, what, 20 quid? And a T15 Talk spit and I'd imagine a lot of swearing but hey if you've done the job on this video hey please comment down below I'd love to hear if these rambling things actually do help people out but otherwise I know people like to see me smash apart Dyson's and smash them back together working just a little bit better so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed and I am possibly another hopeless DC40 We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.